hi welcome to my channel it's spooky season my favorite time of year so I thought I would do a video on the Banshee most people know of the Banshee as a scary ghost woman that wails to warn of death but there's a lot more to it um, I'm gonna go into the story of the Banshee the origin behind her and I'm also gonna share with you guys a personal experience that my family had with the Banshee and um, most people aren't sure if the Banshee is real or not but this is 100% a true story I'll leave that till the end of the video and if you like this kind of thing please give this video a like subscribe for more and let's get started so first up what is a Banshee the name Banshee comes from the Irish Banshee which means woman of the mounds or woman of the other world Ban means woman and she means either mounds or other world. And they are said to be supernatural messengers sent by the other world. There isn't just one banshee that goes around visiting all the families in Ireland. It's said that each family has their own banshee. Traditionally, it was only the five original clans of Ireland that had them. And they were the true Irish. And they were the O'Grady's, the O'Brien's, the O'Connor's, the O'Neill's and the Kavanagh's. I think I got that right. <laughs> they were said to be the only families that had a banshee, but now, centuries later, all the intermarriage and everything, I think um, most Irish people probably have lineage from one of those true clans, so you could say that now, um, probably, every Irish family has their own banshee. A typical description of her is that she has long, flowing white hair and she's dressed neither black or white. Um, she's usually only heard and not seen, but any accounts of her um, being seen, they do vary. Some people say she's headless, some people say she has red hair, um, she's wearing a green dress, red eyes, um, some say young, some say old, so they are different descriptions. But I suppose if every family does have their own separate banshee, then that would make sense that they all look different. But the main, the usual description of her is that she is an old lady with long white hair dressed in black. Some people believe the Banshee is a fairy, but fairies live in communities and tend to interact with humans sometimes, whereas the Banshee is a solo deaf messenger. And um, so, yeah, the main belief is that she's not a fairy. The next thing is what does a Banshee do? To sum it up, a Banshee visits a household in the days before death to warn them that death is coming. And um, she wails and howls and it's a very scary experience, very loud and eerie and terrifying and her wails are kind of between an animal an animal cry or howl. It's a very scary experience, and she doesn't cause death, she just warns of it. And some people say that the person that hears the banshee is the one gonna die, others say it could be anyone in the family, and she usually only visits at night. So when you hear the banshee, there's nothing you can do except know that death is coming. So it's a very scary experience, not just listening to her wails, but also knowing, okay, someone in your family is going to die. Next is the origin of the banshee. The history of the banshee dates back to the eighth century. When someone died, their um, respect and stature among the community was measured by how upset people were at the funeral. The more tears, the more respect they had. So um, families used to hire a woman to cry to heighten the sense of grief. And um, this woman would come in and she would do this kind of howl, wail, cry, very loud. And um, it was called keening. And the women were called keeners. And this word comes from the Irish word for cry, which is queena. These keeners were mostly lower class women and they were paid in alcohol. So because of this, they were sinners and they were said to be doomed in afterlife to become banshees. Um, as keeners, when they were alive, they would cry after death. And as banshees in the afterlife, they would cry before death. And again, it was only for the true Irish prominent families. You know, they, their respect was so high that they wouldn't just get tears after they died. They'd get tears before they died. Um, I don't know what came first, keeners or banshees, but I don't think many people believe that banshees were keeners um, when they were alive. I think people kind of see that as, you know, a typical church warning. If you're sinful and immoral, then look, you're going to end up as a death messenger in the afterlife. <laughs> there are other stories of the origin of the banshee. Some people say she's a sacred ancestor, so that's why every family has their own. It's their ancestor who is the banshee. Um, some people say she's connected to Morrigan, the Irish goddess of war and fate, known to predict doom and death. Um, no one knows the exact origins of the Banshee, but the message is clear, she warns of death. There are also some other stories associated with the Banshee, and um, one of the main ones is never pick up a comb. So the Banshee was known for having long white hair, and there are accounts of her being seen brushing her hair with a comb. Um, and she loved her comb, but if she ever dropped it, 
whoever picked it up would be chased home by the banshee she would bang on their doors wailing until they gave the comb back to her and you couldn't give her the comb back with your own hand because you'd rip your hand off you'd have to use tongs like fireplace tongs to pass the comb back out to her so never pick up a comb um, as kids we were always told do not pick up a comb like you know if you see one on the side of the street or in a field do not touch it because it could belong to the banshee. And I think a lot of Irish adults have it ingrained in us. If we see a comb on the side of the road or out anywhere, we kind of go, oh, don't touch that. It's the banshee's comb. She'll come and get you. <laughs> I'd say that a lot of Irish families have experiences with banshees, especially the older generation, like grandparents and great grandparents. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you guys my personal family story with the banshee. And it happened to my grandmother and she was not one for exaggerating or making anything up. Um, and she's adamant that this is what happened. Um, it was probably, my dad was a kid living with his parents and his two sisters, so it was probably like the 1970s. And um, one night at 2 a.m., my grandmother woke up because she heard this wailing sound. She said it came in through the window and hovered above her bed, right above her head, just hovered there, and everything was cold, and she was terrified. It was really, really scary. And um, it stayed above her head for maybe like a minute wailing and then finally it left and she was so scared and she asked my grandfather and he hadn't heard anything he thought she was crazy he was like there's no noise what are you talking about and um, so I guess she convinced herself oh maybe maybe I didn't hear it the next night again the exact same time 2 a.m. the wailing again comes in slowly through the window hovers right above her head on the bed for about a minute and then leaves so at this point, she's like, okay, that's the second time it's happened. I'm really, really scared now. Um, can we go to a hotel or something? But my grandfather convinced her, it's nothing. Look, you're imagining it's a dream or whatever. So the third night, it happens again. The fourth night, my grandfather was going away on business and she said, there is no way I'm staying in this room, in this bed by myself. After the last three nights, something has come wailing above my head. So she went across the hall and um, across and down the hall into my aunt's bedroom and she slept in her twin bed and at 2 a.m. she was awake kind of fearing is it coming is it gonna happen and again she heard the wailing sound she heard it come into her bedroom across the hall come in again through the window and then it came out into the hall and traveled down and found her in this room and again hovered above her head wailing scaring her and again after about a minute left and she was so terrified she didn't know what it was she just knew that this thing kept hovering above her wailing every night at 2 a.m. and then the next night my grandfather was home so and um, they slept in their bedroom and at 2 a.m. she was awake because she was preparing herself like she was so scared of this whale so um, 2 a.m. came and the wailing didn't come instead the phone rang and it was someone saying that my great aunt had passed away. True story, 100% true. Um, I know people can find reasons or um, excuses and uh, oh, this is what really happened, but my grandmother is not one to exaggerate. As I said, she's like, um, she would only tell the truth and she was so adamant that this happened. Um, and then you know what, I was telling someone this story and they reminded me of the wailing ghost at my wedding. I don't think it was a banshee because no one died, but it's exactly how I would expect the banshee to sound. So my husband and I were getting married in this um, dungeon or cellar in this big old manor house. Um, it, it sounds creepy, but it was actually really nice. It was a nice little dungeon cellar. And it wasn't our wedding, it was just our uh, legal vows. So there weren't, we didn't have many guests. I think there was only like 20 people there. So it was very small, intimate. And um, so we were standing there with the celebrant, all our guests were in chairs behind us. And while my husband and I were saying our vows, we heard someone like crying, but not just crying, like wailing while we were saying our vows. And we were both kind of giving each other looks like, who is that? I, and we didn't want to turn around because we didn't want to embarrass the person because they were making such a big scene. Like they were so loud. Um, so we were just kind of like ignoring and kind of like laughing to each other like, oh my God, like what the heck? I couldn't figure out who it was. Like, was it one of our aunts or something? I did not know who it was, but hang on, let me try and do an impression. It was like, <laughs> 
it was like that so we were like what the heck and then um, anyway we got through our vows we did the wedding and then I was dying to know like who was that so I went to my bridesmaid and I was like oh my god who was that crying and she was like someone was crying and I was like come on you're joking with me who was it and she's like I didn't hear anyone crying and I was like you're messing with me because it was so loud like it was it was louder than our vows how could you not have heard it so then I went up to someone else and I asked them and they were like yeah I was looking around I couldn't figure out who who was crying or who was making that noise like it didn't look like it was coming from anyone I don't know and then I asked someone else and they didn't hear it and it was so strange half of our guests heard it and the other half didn't hear it and it wasn't about where they were sitting because they were all kind of intermingled um, and my husband he is the most cynical he doesn't believe in any of this stuff he doesn't believe in ghosts he doesn't believe in banshees he doesn't believe in anything like that and um, so for him he was like oh it was one of the ants crying they just didn't want to admit it but it was not no one was crying I don't know what this noise was but um, that was our well it wasn't a banshee I guess yeah, but it was our similar um, wailing ghost making banshee noises at our wedding, but definitely a weird one. That actually cellar that we got married in, it was so haunted. All of our photos have um, orbs in them. And our dog, who was our little flower girl, and um, she was terrified in there. And she's not usually scared of things, but um, she was just like trying, pulling on her lead, like choking herself practically, trying to just get out of that cellar. So there's definitely something strange down there. Okay, that was a total sidetrack, um, but that's the closest experience I've ever had to a banshee. And um, not technically a banshee, because no one died, but a wailing ghost at my wedding. Um, so the big question is, are banshees real? And I guess that just depends on what you want to believe. Some people are adamant they are real, they've experienced it, they have personal accounts of it. Some people say everything can be explained, it's not a banshee, it is not true, they're not real. And um, so I guess, yeah, you decide for yourself. Um, I'm not sure. I believe my grandma and I know I heard a wailing something at my wedding that can't be explained. And so I'm kind of in the middle. I kind of want to believe because it's fun to believe, but then I'm also scared, so I don't know. Um, let me know in the comments below uh, what you believe. And also if you have any Banshee stories of your own, any accounts, because I love hearing those. And that's it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye.